over a hundred women with accusations against this man. I mean, maybe you can't believe one woman, but you can believe over a hundred of them with very similar stories. And finally, we believe that maybe the criminal justice system is catching up with the cultural shift that we've seen in the last few years. So this is a celebration for us, for the women, for all of the journalists that put their jobs on the line to tell our stories. Uh, but most of all, it's a win for all of us because no one should, should get away with what he's done in the last 30 years without accountability. And now it looks like the tide has... Thank you. Next up, we have Lauren O'Connor. <laughs> in 2015, when I was an employee at the Weinstein Company, I filed a memo citing the assaults of other women and workplace abuse. In 2017, that memo became the cornerstone of the article that first broke the story on Harvey Weinstein. In that memo, I wrote, I am a 28-year-old woman trying to make a living and a career. Harvey Weinstein is a 64-year-old, world-famous man, and this is his company. The balance of power is me, zero. Harvey Weinstein, 10. Yesterday, the scales of justice restored the balance of power. They tipped in favor of survivors of assault and workplace inequity. The balance of power is now survivors and silence breakers, 10. Abusers and predators, zero. This verdict will change the history of future generations for years to come. To all who came forward, to all who bore testimony yesterday and before, I thank you for your solidarity. May we persist and may our voices continue to be heard. Next up we have Larissa Gomes. Hi. Uh, I stand here today because I am supported by all these brave women who came forward, all the women who may not want to come forward, all of the journalists who broke the stories, all the lawyers and organizations who continue to fight for justice of vic for victims every single day. Harvey Weinstein's conviction does give me a sense of peace. Justice was served and I'm so grateful for the civic duty displayed by these jurors. Now we can turn our attention to the upcoming trial here in LA. We have an opportunity to build on this momentum. This verdict is not everything, but it's significant in so many ways. And let me explain what I mean. In my mind, I am no longer trapped in a hotel room with Harvey Weinstein forever because I am here now with all these fierce women after his rape conviction, standing here reflecting on the irony that he will be the one who now feels the fear of being trapped. I'm not shaming myself anymore because the shame belongs with him. I'm not silent anymore because I'm doing what I can to ensure that he can't silence one more woman. I won't fear the backlash surrounding this anymore because I have turned it into purpose. I'm not accepting the system that he created from abuse of power, intimidation, because I, along with all of these women here, are too busy tearing it down. Speaking out collectively changed things, and this right here is the culmination of courage. This trial has become a symbol around the world, and we've seen the manifestation of some of the deepest issues in our culture. We can open our minds to the nature of trauma and victimhood. We can understand the nuances surrounding cases like this, and that is progress. My hope is that this verdict and these trials serve as the ultimate wake-up call that our justice system and culture will reflect the safer world that we all deserve to live in. Next up we have Katherine Kendall. It's a big day. Um, I am one of the 
many women that was targeted by Harvey Weinstein and the agency that he hired, the Black Cube. And every day that went by that he was not in jail, I feared that I would once again be targeted. It's so important that women continue to come forward and break their silence that predators like Harvey can be put away. Harvey banked on our fear. He bet on our silence, and he collected for many, many years. But today, he lost the bet, and we're the ones winning. And I am proud to stand with my sisters and keep fighting for a better day for all survivors. Next up, we have Jessica Barth. Hi, everyone. Um, the main reason for being here today is to stand alongside these incredibly brave women who have become sisters to me in this two-year journey. Um, we've given each other strength, friendship, and encouragement this entire time. I'm going to be more proud to know everyone up here. <laughs> I would like to say something to Donna Rotano. Um, I want to speak for the one in three women and the one in four men who are victims of sexual violence. And I want to say that it has nothing to do about putting yourself in that position. Accepting a meeting with a Hollywood icon who's produced every single independent film that you grew up loving, that made you fall in love with acting, that encouraged you and inspired you to come to work in this industry to begin with, is not putting yourself in that position. Being alone in your apartment and having that same person barge into your door and rape you is not putting yourself in that position. This is a man that Meryl Streep once called God. You would think if Meryl Streep referred to him as God, maybe you could trust him. Who does deserve and who has put himself in that position is Harvey Weinstein. And it is my hope that victims everywhere can look to this verdict, this guilty verdict, and have hope and the uh, um, courage to come forward and know that you will be believed and your predator will be brought to justice. I really, really believe that this is a brand new era in the world of sexual violence. If somebody is powerful with the resources, the unlimited resources that Harvey Weinstein has, can be brought to justice, anybody can. So I, I really encourage victims to come forward and um, put the shame and the blame on their perpetrator and take it off themselves. Thank you. Last but certainly not least, we have Caitlin Delaney. After Caitlin speaks, we're going to open it up for some questions. Hi, good morning. Um, it's nice to see you all. and. I came here uh, to speak with you, but um, the real reason I got out of bed this morning and prepared a speech was um, to be with the women that are behind me. Uh, we all had busy days yesterday and weren't able to be with each other, um, and um, I wanted to see them because they have been my support. They've held me up, they've given me strength, and together we have made this happen. And. Along with all of them, I, I want to thank the women who spoke in this trial. What they went through was horrific. And, um, and I just thank them for their bravery. And um, I'll just go like this. And then, <laughs> oh, thank you, Lauren. Thank you, sister. Um, I just want to say, you know, the skies are blue. We're in Los Angeles. It's, and it's a new day, it's a new dawn. I thank the state of New York, 
I thank the jurors, I thank the prosecutors for bringing in a conviction on two counts of rape. And Harvey Weinstein, a reporter asked me yesterday, um, how do you think Harvey Weinstein will be known now? What do you think his legacy will be? And I, will, I said, well, it certainly won't be for the movies that he made. It will be as a convicted serial rapist. And, um, you know, this, this is profound. This is, this is precedent setting. And um, since I couldn't see my sisters yesterday, I can tell you that the best part of my day was going to the grocery store and seeing a little girl running around. And, and I said, the, the world has changed. You will have a different world because of what happened today. It is not the same. It will never be the same for survivors everywhere. And as we move to the Los Angeles case, which is equally important, and um, there, there will hopefully be more of us that can testify to prior bad acts, because from what I understand, the statutes here, um, there's more leeway to bring in um, witnesses. And um, I certainly hope you hear from all of us and many of us in that trial as well. And. Um, um, uh, I don't know. I'm just so happy uh, to be here with my sisters, as I said. And thank you all for listening to us. Thank you. All right, we're going to try and do this in, a, in an orderly fashion. So if you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll try and, try and call on you. Yes. I'm just going to duck down. She's very supportive of all the women here. What do you think about the current, there's a campaign by street artists that said she knew that that uh, something was going on now. What do I, <laughs> I just want to say my intention was not to go against Meryl Streep. My intention was to say that if someone as uh, revered as Meryl Streep was saying that he was God, you wouldn't think twice about having a meeting with him. Meryl Streep's amazing. <laughs> and she's a part of Time's Up, and she's very supportive of all the women. Okay, thank you. We're going to go, yes, ma'am. Sorry, the, the Los Angeles District Attorney has to present his um, list of potential witnesses to the court before, the, and the court will decide. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the question. I do, I do hope I can't say I'm just, I'm just speaking to the law here in Los Angeles. Um, there's more room for us to speak in, in court. Yes, ma'am. I want to say something. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I want to say something about the street art um, in Meryl Street. I've seen that street art. I don't know where it came from, but it angers me that the target would be a woman. Um, it's just taking it right off of Harvey again and maybe the men that were complicit. But to think that because she did a movie with him means that she knew all of his gossip is preposterous. He was probably busy doing her work, and um, people can have things hidden from them. So I'm not sure what street artist did that, but um, I don't think it was Banksy. And I want to add that just because a man abuses hundreds of women doesn't mean he abuses every woman he's ever worked with. So it is possible for women to have worked with him and been treated with respect by him. 
I'm sure Meryl, Meryl Streep didn't know. She's been very supportive. When he tried to use her in the press against us, he came out and repudiated it. So let's not make this about the women. Yes, please. So I understand his lawyers are going to appeal the case. Are you worried that he's going to get out while this is going on? This is what his lawyers have said that he's going to be out while they appeal this case because of his health problems and they're going to uh, request that. Um, yeah, that's, that's terrifying. I think that we should all take a moment here to realize that if this wasn't Harvey Weinstein, if this was just anyone that didn't have money and power and couldn't afford world's best attorneys, um, they would be in jail. They would not get to go to the hospital or, you know, remit. I mean, if you're convicted of two felonies in New York, you're remanded to jail. That's typically what happens. And if he's not, then he's getting special treatment. Thank you. I just have one, one, one quick thing I want to say about the law. We have to remember that um, the case in New York cannot be appealed on the facts. The jury decided on the facts, and those are the facts that he was found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, but they, they can feel appeal on procedure, so I, I imagine that's what they're going to try to do. I don't, I don't think they, yeah, I think those are questions that you should ask for the DA in, in L.A. I think it's a great question. Yes. I have a question. What did you feel when you heard that he was going to the hospital with chest pain? I personally felt like he's a very good actor. Um, you know, this is a man who knows how to manipulate the press, and clearly he's done so with his uh, iconic walker now. So let's just say, you know, I know women who are literally dying, uh, who are also victims, and I say let's give, you know, them the help, and if he's got to go to the hospital, it should be in jail, that kind of hospital, not a special uh, hospital where he has his own suite. And I thought maybe he's experiencing a panic attack, you know, something all of us have experienced for decades after his abuse. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you guys, I mean, a lot of you had to go through hell to get this out, and, like, it almost didn't come out. I mean, there was just, just how long it took and how, like, you know, just reading about how hard it was to get it out. Like, aren't you guys, you guys are obviously optimistic, but is there a little bit of fear that maybe things wouldn't change? I'll talk to this. Uh, the story almost didn't come out because of Harvey Weinstein's tactics, as you saw in the courtroom, how far he would go to shut this story down. He did it in every way, shape, or form, from the top of the NBC to going after all the journalists, spying on a lot of us, hiring black Cuban Mossad. He did everything he could to sh make sure this story didn't see the light of day, and thank God it did. Yes, we have down there. Hi. about what the L.A. District Attorney is, is working on. You, should, you know, you can probably ask them. Um, but we won't know anything until, you know, until that trial actually starts. Yeah, I just obviously want to remind everybody that these are not, these are survivors here. They're not lawyers. So if you have any, you know, legal questions or questions about what's coming up in the case, we obviously hope that the L.A. District Attorney moves swiftly. Um, but if you have any questions about their timing, you know, any, you know, uh, What's coming up next in the case? I urge you to reach out to the LADA because I think obviously that's the best way to get the answer as quickly as possible. These women are all, you know, speculating in the same way that you all are from the media. Yes, please. How have you felt in the hearing? Uh, I was watching the verdict being read on a news panel live, and when the first count of not guilty came through, I was sitting with my husband and. Um, he actually started crying because I let out this guttural, like, yelp of pain because I thought our greatest fear was coming true that he was going to walk. 
And when the second count came through as guilty, I just started sobbing these tears of relief because it was a moment that I think all of us were afraid would never come. So it was a complex day full of, you know, anger that it wasn't life in jail, but relief that it was being held accountable. I'll say one more thing that's sort of beautiful about this whole experience is that I didn't feel joy just for myself, but I really felt the women that I've come to know in the last two and a half years, I felt their joy and that quadrupled. So it was a really emotional day and it was a victory. I felt incredibly victorious. to touch on that and, and my feeling is maybe a little bit more controversial but I was talking with my husband when the verdict came out and I was talking with many of the women here um, texting back and forth and but when you really think about it that th this person is going to spend the rest of his life in jail probably um, for me that it was a complicated feeling because it, to wish that on somebody is a really um, intense feeling I, I'm thrilled that, that he will be because there has to be there has to be consequences. My husband told me there has to be consequences. The, rape is the, the worst thing one of the worst criminal acts that you can inflict upon someone. So there has to be consequences. So while I don't feel joyful about thinking about him rotting away in a, in a jail cell as I wouldn't do for any other human being, um, I'm I am I am thrilled that he's being held accountable and uh, Hopefully, this will be a precedent so other people will be held accountable as well. I'm going to jump back to how I felt reading the verdict. Uh, tremendous gratitude. While he was not convicted on every charge, the jury stood up and said one time is enough. It does not matter if you worked with someone. It does not matter if you went on to have a consensual relationship. One time is too many. I can speak to this because I'm the, the lead plaintiff in the class action. Um, the, the truth is no, and I don't think there's really ever any compensation, if you will, to fill this void of sadness and uh, depression that many women have gone through through their experiences with Harvey. That being said, um, I, I want to say that myself and a large team of women, many standing behind me, fought tirelessly uh, through the bankruptcy, which was a very strategic thing he did for TWC. So when we get people who blame us for how much money that we actually were allowed to get, you must understand that this is unprecedented for a bankruptcy, that many of the unsecured creditors stepped aside. You have to understand, $250 million he owed, and those people stepped aside to allow us as victims to get this money. So that is huge, and I thank them with my you know, deepest sincerity. Um, and in addition, I mean, since there is nothing that's gonna ever fill this void, it allows, though, these women to actually get something. So I feel personally uh, happy that they will get something and that all women, because this is the class action, can step up, whoever was harmed by Harvey, to get something and we have a special master who decides what that amount will be. I, I just also wanted to say about the, the civil case, which I'm also a part of, um, the New York State's Attorney General also brought a civil case against Harvey and the Weinstein Company and the Miramax Company for the women that he harassed and abused that worked for him. And we're negotiating the settlement on all of their behalf because the, the victim should not bear the cost of the crimes. And um, so I just wanted to make sure you were all aware of that. Okay, thank you. All right, we're, we're going to... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm a 
slow processor. Well, I've only just come up with my answers to some of the earlier questions. Um, but I did want to stay, because everyone asks us, how do you feel, how do you feel? And the truth is, most of the time, it's very hard to describe how you feel, because you're living in this state of heightened tension, and you're really not in connection with your body and your feelings. But I think for me, it was like we've been living in this alternative universe. So I was attacked by Harvey in 1991. That's a heck of a long time ago. And I had to be quiet about it for so long. And so many women here were quiet, either from fear or from shame or from feeling like we didn't have a chance to stand up against this man. And so you would see him at award shows with a beautiful women draped on his arm. And you would think, oh my God, I know that that man is a predator. And so yesterday was like those two universes came together. And I think that's why it's hard to describe how it feels because it was like a seismic shift. It was a huge colliding of those two universes. You ask, is there more money? To, so, I mean, in addition to this process in the last few years, you have to understand that four judges released the directors. Okay, four. So, some of them wouldn't even listen to the evidence that we brought against the directors. So, that is what determined the amount of money that we were allotted. Okay, and because of the bankruptcy, we had to do it this way. And there was only, they only left three cases in which we could try for, through this class action. But the three of us decided it is not about the three of us, it is about the collective us. And so again, I am proud to say that myself included fought so that everyone could get something. As big or small as that is, I can tell you honestly, we would have done it for no money because we wanted to make the world a better place for our kids and their kids and so on. the decision and I hope he looks in the mirror and realizes that he belongs in jail too for all of the women he abused for so many years. All right, with that, um, we're gonna... Can I ask one more? Is that okay? Sure. Forgive, and this may have been discussed already, if it was, forgive me. Uh, but the, the criminal prosecution looming in Los Angeles, is there a sense that that will accomplish something further? Is it worth going through the pain again? I see nodding heads. Let's hear voices to go with the nodding heads. <laughs> there are new women, new, there'll be new uh, witnesses, and one of them um, was 16 at the time, so yes. No, the, we have, we have um, this is about the fight that, that we have going forward, the momentum that we're getting and gaining every day. Um, so yes, we definitely want to keep fighting. Um, LA, London, whatever comes up. I think uh, everything that's happened in regards to Harvey Weinstein in the past two plus years has created, um, it has resonated around the world. So yes, we are going to continue this conversation and there are going to be new things that come to light and, you know, he's going to be held accountable for more of the crimes that he's committed against women and um, we're not going to stop talking about it. So yes. Because 108 women came forward. That's 108 and more criminal acts. And there are many more women who chose not to come forward. So that's why as well. 
sorry. For real now, thank you guys all for coming. Um, if you guys have any additional questions, you can email um, any of them through us at sb at sadnick.com. Um, it's the email address that you should have gotten the advisory from, sb at sadknick.com. These women are going to be here if you want to do some one-on-ones. I'm sure some of them would love to do that. Um, thank you guys all for coming again. It was really great that you all showed up. Yeah, let's take a quick photo. Let's get in.